Now, Public Protector Busisiwe Mkabane has withdrawn her nomination from the Chief Justice selection process. The presidency confirmed the list of six candidates submitted to him by the uh, panel to, that was set up to help replace the Chief Justice Mokweng Mokweng as he is retired. Let's discuss the latest developments now uh, with Chris Oxtoby, who is a senior researcher at the University of Cape Town's Democratic Governance and Rights Unit. Uh, Chris, thank you for making time. So Dr. Wallace Mkoki and Advocate Busisiwe Mkobani have withdrawn from the nomination, which left six candidates, but it appears we don't really know who out of the three um, have been recommended to the president. That's out of this list that's, uh, that the president sent out in a statement. We don't know uh, who are the three or two even that have been nominated. Uh, yeah, it, it is a little unclear about exactly what the panel has, has done with the remaining long list. Um, I, I think Part of, the, part of the reason why we're, we're in the dark is that um, I think everyone has been quite careful to ensure that it's clear that the, the final decision as to the names being considered is one made by the president, as mm. the constitution requires. Um, but it is, it is not completely clear to me from the, the, the presidency's announcement today exactly what the panel has submitted yeah. to the president, whether they have uh, simply submitted a report on the remaining long-listed candidates yeah. or whether they have reduced that to a suggested shortlist. Um, and I do hope that um, at some point in the process, um, certainly by the time the president puts the, the shortlisted candidates forward to the Judicial Service Commission, that, that, we, do, um, that we do receive clarity on that and that the, the panel's report is in fact released in order to ensure the transparency of this process. Yeah, let's hope so, because, and as you say, the confusing part is that all the six names um, from the statement from the president, it doesn't indicate out of the six which names have been shortlisted to the president. The president only says uh, he's considering what's, you know, been shortlisted uh, to him. So let's hope to find out uh, sometime. Are you surprised, though, about the decision by the public protector to withdraw? Um, no, I mean, to be very honest, I was quite surprised that that nomination was accepted in the first place. Mm. Um, I mean, obviously, it's well known that there are, you know, controversies around uh, the public protector and the, um, uh, the battering that uh, her reports have taken in the courts, um, which, which caused serious doubt on, would have caused serious doubt on her suitability. But even if one leaves those issues aside, mm. um, you, you know, she had no previous experience as a judicial officer. Um, limited, as I understand it, uh, practice. Yeah. She's an admitted advocate, limited practicing experience. So coming up against very experienced uh, judges who have headed um, very important courts um, who, who are also on that list, I, I just think it was such a, a, a long shot and, mm. and, and really an, an unrealistic prospect that, that well, uh, the public protector would be a serious candidate. Well, she released a statement this afternoon explaining that the work of the public protector is similar to that of a judge, and I understood her to say she's qualified and has the judicial experience for the job. Because in the explanation, she didn't withdraw because she's not qualified. She just says she's focused on the work of the public protector's office as she completes her term. I think she has got uh, two more years to go. I, I must admit, I haven't uh, seen the, the statement in question. Mm. Um, I, I, would, I would differ with the view that the work of the public protector can be analogous to the, um, uh, to the work of a judge. I think there are, there are some significant uh, differences there. Um, and there are also particular challenges of leading the judiciary and having mm. first-hand experience of the challenges that the judiciary faces. Um, which are inevitably going to be different from the challenges that one faces leading the, the public protector's office. Um, so whilst that may be the, uh, the official reason, I'm not, I'm, I'm not convinced that, uh, uh, that, that it may be, mm. you know, it made her presence on the shortlist any more realistic. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, and I know we're still trying to figure out w how the processes were done. I, I'm just trying to to figure out what role the panel actually played. Uh, for instance, you know, did they interview mm -hmm. the candidates that they have now shortlisted uh, to, to President Cyril Ramaphosa? Was that the initial responsibility that they were tasked with? Uh, because I imagine 
what's the point of the panel if all of they did was just to compile the list of the names that were already nominated and at this rate, excuse me, at this rate we've got six of them, then just forward that over to the president after, of course, looking at, at the qualifications and whether or not the people have the requisite, uh, the requisite um, experience for the job. And I think it's a, it's a very good and fair question, and I think it highlights again the importance of us actually seeing the panel's final report to understand what exactly they have done. Um, my understanding was that the panel would not be interviewing the, the potential candidates because there is still the interview process with the Judicial Service Commission uh, to come, um, which is in fact one of the next uh, steps in the process. And so a, a, a sort of a, a prior set of interviews by the panel might risk looking like it's uh, stepping on the toes of the Judicial Service Commission. Mm. Um, I would have expected that there was a fair bit of work that the panel could have done by yeah. um, looking at the, uh, the, the applications and the documentation that, uh, that would have gone with the, with the candidates, uh, looking at the objections that might have been, uh, might have been filed to them and assessing those for compliance with the, the panel's criteria. So I think, I think quite a lot of initial work could have been, and I expect would have been done by the panel in that respect. Um, but um, to, just to reiterate again, this is why it's really important that we, that we do eventually uh, see the report of the panel to understand exactly what that, what that role was. Yeah, and I wonder if we'll actually get to see that report, because I'm looking at the statement the president released, and, and he says, uh, after giving consideration to the recommendations of the panel, the president will decide which candidates from the shortlist presented to him by the panel uh, to refer to the Judicial Service Commission. The content of the report itself will not be made public as the candidates uh, the president will select from the shortlist still need to go through a process of interviews by the Judicial Service Commission. So we may have to wait a little bit longer um, if ever we're going to see this report being made public. Chris, thank you for making time. Chris Oxtoby is with the University of Cape Town's Democratic Governance and Rights Unit weighing in on the developing story this afternoon around public protector Busisiwe Mkobani having withdrawn her nomination in the search for a new chief justice in the Constitutional Court.